Hello my friends and happy Halloween. This is a Halloween special. This is just for fun. I filmed this back in Wisconsin before we came to Hawaii. I hope that you enjoy it. Deep in the forests of Wisconsin, there is a place called Blackpool. And not far from Blackpool is the werewolf cage. Hello, my friends. Sometimes we can imagine that the whole world has been explored. We can go on Google Map and we can look over any terrain with that satellite imagery that can get us quite close. That is one of the big illusions of our world, that all the adventure is stripped away, that there's no wonder or mystery left. But the truth is, of course, if you wander off the path a little ways, there's all kinds of mysteries just waiting to be seen and explored. Now, this particular mystery is not just close off the path. This is way out in the woods of northern Wisconsin. During my time here, with this forest as the backyard, essentially, of the Rewild University campus, I've found many mysteries in these woods. But this is one of particular interest to me. And I thought, you might have something to say about it. I will share the legend, and then I will show it to you. So the legend is that there was a man who was inflicted with lycanthropy. And the way we've seen it in movies is that people turn into kind of a half, half wolf, half man type creature. But in this case, it was more, it was closer to the original ideas of lycanthropy that this uh, man would turn into a wolf at night. And all the classic features, the full moon and everything else. But he uh, could not control himself in his wolf form and he hurt some people. So he went out into the woods and he lived very simply like, like our bushcrafters today would live, living with the land. But he had to build himself a special cage that would contain him in his wolf form so that he wouldn't hurt anybody. And I'm at the site of the cage that he built. I, it was actually kind of tough to find it because I used to come here by certain paths, but I haven't been here for about a year. And trees have fallen, it's become overgrown. It was a lot more difficult to find. But, but here it is, I'm gonna show you the cage and at the end of showing you the cage, I'm going to show you why the why there's this mystery about it. Because at first it just looks like kind of a fenced off area in the woods. But you'll see why it's actually the werewolf cage. All right, so we're out in the middle of the woods and we come across this, this wire cage. And it's tall. Oh, probably goes about eight feet in most places. And it was built down into the ground. So the wire goes down into the ground. This is just duff layer, but if you dig down further, it was trenched in. It was built in its time with sturdy, sturdy logs right off the land here. So these aren't milled, obviously. These were just cut down off of the land. There's the cross beam. There's the wire going up. Over the years, things have fallen. It's become crushed. But it goes, I would say this is a, a mm, 30 by 30 foot enclosed area. And the same all the way around, these sturdy, sturdy poles and nice and high and dug into the ground. Now there's lots of explanations for this thus far. Could have been, well sometimes 
enclosures are built to keep out the deer so that people could grow things in the middle. And, and that makes perfect sense. This would have been a deer enclosure cage. There's tons of deer here in Wisconsin. It's managed for hunting rather than the ecosystem. So native plants and other things are just eaten to the ground. It's hard to grow a lot of trees. So possibly this was built to uh, keep native plants or other trees growing, or there could have been gardens inside. Although if there were gardens, you guys probably know about tree tracks from my other videos. And you can see, wait a second, this wasn't, I mean, for, for over a hundred, well, okay, so where's that tree? It's gone. So for over two, three hundred years, this land was never um, flattened out. And usually we do that to make a garden. It's not impossible to garden on, <laughs> on terrain. But usually we humans, especially up here during that time, you know, what, 40, 50, 60 years ago, would flatten the ground out. And this land definitely has not been flattened. But that is not why it's the werewolf cage. This is why it's the werewolf cage. And it might sink in before I tell you, but let's take a look. So there's a very small door. You can see my hand. And there's a small little door to get in and out. And that's unusual on its own. If this was for humans, well, we would build it bigger, I would imagine. But this small little door. So maybe this was a pen for animals. Here's another good explanation. They kept dogs or something else inside of here. But maybe you have seen the mystery right there. You guys see that padlock? Today, I can reach around. There it is. But what is strange about this? That padlock is on the inside. So, what kind of a situation would it be where somebody would lock it on the inside rather than the outside? Now, <laughs> there's a little convenience factor. I mean, you can reach around as you saw. It's not comfortable. So theoretically, I could reach around through, through the fencing and I could get a key in there, but it would be very clumsy. Why is the lock not on the outside? That's where it becomes the legend of the werewolf cage. And here's the rest of the story that explains why the padlock is the way it is. He would leave it unlocked during the day, keep the key in a safe place. When he felt the change was going to overcome him at night, he would go into the cage and he would lock himself in, hang the key up in a safe place where he could only get it as a human. When he turned into a wolf, he could not get out through the wire. He could not dig out because he had trenched it in. And of course, he could not get the key and unlock it from the inside. In the morning, when he transformed back into a human, he could get the key, unlock the padlock, let himself out, and be ready for the, rest, for the next transformation. Now, here's where you come in because I'm not saying that I actually believe this is a werewolf cage. Maybe it was. But can you give an alternative or better explanation for why this is here, out in the middle of the woods, by an eight or nine foot wire mesh cage built very sturdily, trenched into the ground with a small door with the padlock on the inside? All right, I cannot wait to hear your ideas and explanations. And let's see if we can figure out this mystery. All right, love to you all. Can't wait to see what you have to say in the comments.